Hi everyone, Susan Brady here. Thank you for joining me today. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about magnesium because it is such a pivotal mineral for healthy aging and for our bones. And yet it is a very common deficiency and a magnesium deficiency can increase the risk of numerous types of cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, di uh, depression, Alzheimer's disease. It can contribute to muscle pain and fatigue and fibromyalgia, and of course, bone loss. And there are a lot of reasons why people can become deficient in magnesium. So many chronic diseases can deplete the body of magnesium. Certain me medications can create deficiencies, nutrient deficiencies in our soil, including the widespread use of the pesticide glyphosate, and glyphosate reduces the amount of magnesium in the soil, as well as the amount of magnesium that the crops can absorb. Having a diet high in refined and processed foods, excessive intake of alcohol and coffee, drinking things like sodas, and it doesn't matter, it can be diet soda or regular soda because soda increases phosphorus levels in the body, which then can lead to magnesium loss. And so can taking large doses of, dosages of calcium and vitamin D because they can lead to increased excretion of magnesium in the urine and decreased absorption of magnesium in our intestines. And then speaking of absorption, having dysbiosis or an overgrowth of patholo pathogenic bacteria in the gut may also alter magnesium absorption from the diet. And of course, as we age, we're at greater risk for magnesium deficiency, just because we tend to have decreased intestinal absorption. So for all of these reasons, is a vast majority of us are at risk for magnesium deficiency. So magnesium is known as the master mineral because it is directly involved in so many essential processes in the body. It is particularly important for the proper function of the brain, the heart, the muscles, and the bones all things that we want to protect as we age. And then on top of that, magnesium has anti-inflammatory properties, which can prevent against inflammation. So inflammation is that low grade inflammatory state that's often seen with aging. And what's interesting is that studies have shown that people with magnesium deficiencies have higher levels of C-reactive protein which is a marker for low-grade inflammation in the body. And conversely, those people with sufficient magnesium levels had normal C-reactive protein and no indication of inflammation in the body. So it does really appear that magnesium is important in controlling inflammation. So how do you know if you're deficient in magnesium? Well, one, I would recommend routinely getting your CRP checked. So you should ask your healthcare provider to do that at least once a year for you. And then some other signs of magnesium deficiency include muscle cramps. I think that's one of um, the most obvious signs. So cramping and twitching in your muscles, especially if you're someone who jumps out of bed in the middle of the night with that Charlie horse in your calf, it very well might mean that you need more magnesium. Also generalized fatigue and weakness is another sign, depression, irritability, anxiety can all be linked to magnesium deficiency, a irregular heartbeat or heart palpitation. So magnesium is central to a healthy heart rhythm because it's involved in transporting other electrolytes such as calcium and potassium into the muscle cells of the heart where they are needed for proper nerve conduction and muscle contraction for a normal heartbeat. Oftentimes sleep disorders or insomnia can be a sign of magnesium deficiency because magnesium regulates melatonin levels that keep your body's um, biological clock 
in a consistent pattern. And then it also helps because it helps to lower mental and physical stress, which is going to allow you to sleep better. Constipation is another significant symptom of a magnesium deficiency. So magnesium helps to relax the muscles of the intestines. So, um, the stool passes through more easily, but it also helps to increase water in the intestines, which makes the stool softer and makes it easier to have a bowel movement. And then of course, anyone with osteoporosis or osteopenia needs magnesium because it's essential for the absorption of vitamin D and calcium. It promotes bone formation. As I mentioned, it has anti-inflammatory effects, which benefit and protects against bone loss. And um, interesting, just recently in a 2022 review of magnesium and bone health, what they found was adequate magnesium intake resulted in higher bone mineral density, suppressed bone turnover, and reduced fracture risk in adults. So those are some of the most prevalent symptoms of magnesium deficiency. Now, most of the research concludes that we need about three to 500 mag, uh, milligrams of total magnesium a day. And I think that's a good place to start, but honestly, how much magnesium you need is going to very um, much depend on your health, your diet, medications that you might be taking. So I always recommend to start by getting your daily dose of magnesium through your diet. So nuts and seeds like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, cashews, almonds, all excellent sources of magnesium. So are dark leafy greens like kale and spinach and collard greens, dark chocolate um, has a high content of magnesium and so do avocados. So for those of you who enjoy avocado chocolate pudding, you're easily getting 100 milligrams or more of magnesium in just one serving. Other foods like legumes and whole grains and quinoa are also good sources of magnesium. You also need to make sure that you're eating organic foods free from pesticides as much as possible. And then um, there are also several mineral waters that can provide you with magnesium. So um, Gerald Steiner, a sparkling natural mineral water from Germany contains 180, 108 milligrams of magnesium per liter. So you can get hydrated and get your magnesium at the same time. So if you're including these foods in your daily diet, and if you have good functioning digestive system and healthy gut, you're probably getting enough magnesium. But if you're concerned that you're not, and you have some of these symptoms, as I mentioned above, you can certainly supplement with magnesium. Now, there are many different types of magnesium out there, and it really does need to be tailored to your individual health needs as to what form is gonna work best for you. The one form that I don't recommend is magnesium oxide because mineral oxides in general are not well absorbed. So I tend to like magnesium glycinate, gluconate, lactate, citrate, they're all forms that are well absorbed. However, magnesium glycinate um, glycinate does seem to have the lowest risk of gastrointestinal side effects. So one of the side effects of magnesium can be loose stools and abdominal cramping. And that's why it's actually often good for constipation. There is a new form of magnesium that's being studied a lot right now, magnesium threonate, and it looks like it could be a really good supplement form of magnesium for the brain and the nervous system. And please, if you're taking calcium and vitamin D, you really need to be taking magnesium as well. So that's a wrap up of magnesium. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you want my help exploring how much magnesium your unique body needs and what type or form of magnesium would be best for you. I hope you have a wonderful, healthy rest of your day and thank you for joining me.